guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Alexa Stevens. I am a board certified dermatologist. And today we're going to answer one of the most common questions I get asked by my patients, which is what foods do I need to avoid and what foods can I eat that are going to help improve my acne? This question I get asked so many times a day that I thought it would be one great for me to film a video to give to my patients because we talk about it, but sometimes it's great to be able to have something to go back and reference and to provide the information to a big population of people uh, that can benefit from it. I will say this disclaimer from the front. Foods and how a certain person reacts to foods are extremely subjective. This also goes for supplements. How individuals react to supplements are also extremely subjective. It makes it very difficult for physicians who operate from a place of evidence-based research, evidence-based medicine. If the science that's there is not backed by really strong ethical clinical research studies, it makes it very difficult for us as physicians to actually give a recommendation. So the things that we're going to talk about today are going to be things that do have good clinical-based research studies that have been done in ethical studies. But more importantly than that is to really know your own body and your, know, your own sensitivities. Just because one person is sensitive or flares or has an acne flare or dealing with the skin from one food group does not mean the next person will. So yes, we'll talk about the broad spectrum of the majority of people, but if there is a food group that we talk about or don't talk about, and you notice that you flare when you eat that, then it doesn't matter what the scientific studies say, your body is sensitive to that food, so you should avoid it. One of the questions I get asked an awful lot is how much water should I be drinking? It's a great question because it lets me know that my patients know that hydration is extremely important. When it comes to water, you want to make sure that you're drinking at least half your body weight in ounces. For example, if you're 120 pounds, you need to be drinking 60 ounces of water. So one of the strongest studies that we have in medicine correlating food to acne is a study that was done in a population in Papua New Guinea and Paraguay. It showed that these populations absolutely are devoid of acne, a whole population with no acne. The corporate reason? No processed foods, no packaged foods. These foods that are processed and packaged have extremely high glycemic index. A glycemic index is going to drive your sugar levels up, causing your sugar levels to be elevated, Elevated sugar levels will make elevated insulin. When your insulin spikes, it causes your oil glands to actually secrete more oil and it causes your cells to turn over faster, therefore clogging your pores. So what you want to do is try and find a diet that is one, free of processed and packaged foods, but two, also low in glycemic index. There's a few diets out there that are actually low in GI. It would be the Mediterranean diet or one of the South Beach diets. Those are both very low GI diets, and patients have been known to clear their skin by following those diets. Now, I don't recommend any diet or diet book. I'm not telling you to go change your lifestyle, but I am telling you to consider that if you've done everything right, you followed the steps provided to you by a dermatologist, and you've watched your diet, you're not eating packaged or processed foods, it may be a good idea to go ahead and look at the glycemic index of the foods you're eating. For example, really healthy foods can have a high glycemic index. For example, watermelon. Watermelon is a great food. Um, it's healthy. It does not have a lot of calories. However, if you're really trying to narrow down your foods, it's better to take something like a berry. So strawberries and blueberries are full of antioxidants. They're full of vitamin C. They're going to produce collagen for you. They're going to fight wrinkles. They're going to protect you against the sun. They're full of phytonutrients, so they're getting rid of those free radicals. And on top of that, your skin won't sag and it will give you a nice glow. So vitamin C, just like we talked about vitamin C that can be found in lemons, 
It's just one of those extra bonuses that you can get. If you choose something with a lower glycemic index, like berries, or a fruit that has a higher glycemic index, like a watermelon. In addition, it's a good idea to choose half a grapefruit over half an orange because grapefruits have a lycopene in there. Lycopene helps to make your, sense, your skin softer, plumper, fuller looking. Um, the very glycemic index level is super low. I'll put it on the screen the comparison of the glycemic index of common fruits. Um, but again, this one is antioxidants. It's anti-inflammatory. It's full of vitamin C, building your collagen. Same thing with strawberries. Another thing to think about when you're talking about glycemic index are healthy foods like oatmeal. So oatmeal is a great food, um, but what you want to do is you want to choose a still-cut version of oatmeal um, as opposed to the instant oats. So still-cut versions of oatmeal have much lower glycemic index than an instant oat, for example. These are just still cut oats from Trader Joe's, mostly because I don't have time to stay and cook um, an entire thing of still cut oats. This is just the reality of my life, but I still want the benefit of the still cut oats. So I, so I get these pre frozen ones um, from Trader Joe's, and I get all the benefit of the still cut oat without the time consumption of it. Um, and again, it's better than choosing an instant oat because it has a lower glycemic index. Another big food choice to make is choosing cellulose carbohydrates over starchy carbohydrates. So cellulose carbohydrates um, like carrots and broccoli are actually going to work to brighten your skin, where starchy carbohydrates are going to work to dull your skin. Um, in addition, carrots have a lot of beta carotene. Beta carotene has been known to fight UV rays, therefore reducing wrinkling and sagging. Another really popular and hot topic and a lot of good evidence-based science to back it up is milk. You actually do want to avoid dairy milk, especially skim milk, if you are suffering with acne. Dairy milk, especially skim milk, has been shown to actually increase the severity of acne. So if you love milk or you make a lot of smoothies or you need something that has a good milky substance, just switch it to either an almond milk or a pea protein milk. There's so many different milks out there now. Um, almond milk doesn't offer a lot of protein. So I choose pea protein milk because I can still get my protein in that way. Um, another big one and one with good scientific research to back it up is whey protein. So if you are someone who works out and then likes to enjoy a smoothie afterwards or consume a whey protein shake afterwards and you notice that you have pretty good severe acne where all of a sudden you're breaking out after you started working out and you think it's actually because of working out and sweating, it's most likely because you started consuming whey protein. Whey protein has been linked to acne, worsening acne and cystic acne. So instead of having whey protein, it is a great idea to go ahead and switch to a plant-based protein. And there are again so many out there. Um, this is one of my favorites because it has a lot of added benefits, um, which we won't talk about in this video. But Make the switch from whey to plant-based protein, and that should also help your acne. Okay, so we talked about the major food groups to avoid. High glycemic index foods and dairy, specifically milk and skim milk. But what about supplements? Supplements are all the rage. Um, there's not a lot of evidence to back a lot of supplements. However, we know that flavonoids, which are found in the purest form of chocolate, cacao, is a really good antioxidant. It also helps to fight damaging UV rays and scavenges free radicals. So if you're going to choose chocolates, choose a darker chocolate. So since this is the eat this, not that, I would tell you to choose darker chocolate over the milk chocolates and get the purest form that you can that's full of cacao or get cacao itself. So all the flavonoids that are there. Um, Another really good and important thing to remember is green tea. So when you're trying to choose between coffee or tea or different types of tea, go ahead and choose a green tea found to be full of ECAG, which is a powerful antioxidant. It's great for wrinkles, sagging skin. It's also good for fighting inflammation. Other supplements to consider are things that have silica in there. 
Um, if you don't want to have a supplement that has silica, remember cucumber skin has silica in there. But if you're looking for something with a little silica, um, there's Fiji water, but there's also things like silica drops that you can found. Um, this one is a beauty concentrate from Saqqara. Another great supplement to consider would be HelioCare. HelioCare has been shown to provide protection from the UV rays, which makes it both anti-aging, but it also has been shown to help with conditions like melasma and other pigmented conditions, in addition to helping prevent sunburns. Um, it is plant-derived. It comes from the Polypodium leucotomus leaf. Um, it's an extract, and to be honest, I recommend this to so many of my patients, um, especially those that are out in the sun, find it difficult to reapply their sunscreen, or fucks for people who suffer from melasma. Frequently, my patients will ask me about supplements for acne or anti-aging purposes. The one that I recommend the most is a probiotic. So if you're looking to either take a hair, nail, and skin vitamin or probiotic, I highly recommend that you choose the probiotic. Mostly because the probiotic is actually going to help regulate the microflora in both your gut and your skin promoting clearer skin, whereas the hair, nail, and skin vitamin is frequently full of a lot of biotin and zinc, which can actually lead to acne. Um, so if you're looking to clear acne, it doesn't make sense to take something that may actually worsen your acne. Side note, your probiotic really needs to have a prebiotic on board to optimally work. So if you're looking for a probiotic and you turn on the back of it to look at the ingredients and there's no fiber in there, you're not getting the best bang for your buck. You're going to have to eat a lot of fiber in your diet um, in order to get that probiotic to do what it actually needs to do. My favorite probiotic to recommend is actually Tula. And it's because not only does it have the probiotic in there, but it also has fiber as their prebiotic in addition to ceramides. Ceramides are usually deficient in acne patients, eczema patients, etc. As a side note, I frequently get asked by my patients about turmeric. Uh, turmeric is an excellent choice if you're looking to fight inflammation. It's also a great antioxidant. So again, we're getting our anti-aging in there as well as clearing our acne. But if you're going to choose a turmeric, make sure you're choosing a very high quality turmeric that includes black pepper. Remember, without the black pepper, you're not maximizing the absorption of the actual active ingredient and therefore you might as well not be taking it. So choose one that has black pepper also in there. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of my video. I hope that you learned something useful, a new tip or trick that will help you have clear, radiant, beautiful skin. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll be making weekly videos of skincare tips that can help you and your skin thrive. Please comment down below if there's a certain food that you've noticed has triggered your acne. I'd love to talk about it and research it more with you guys. If there's another video that you really would like to see me make, please also comment down below. Again, this is my first video. I've wanted to make YouTube videos for three years now and have just been too nervous to do so. So I'd really appreciate it if you did like it or subscribe so that I know that I'm doing a good job and I can continue to make good content for you guys. Have a great day.